what's going on guys this is mike from mobboxgraphics.com and in this video tutorial we're just going to be going through this really cool um like a lens blur lens distortion intro um zoom in i guess or zoom out animation it's pretty cool i saw it in a mac commercial and it was just very brief but it, it looked really cool um i'll show you here in after effects what it looked like um, but I thought it looked cool, so I wanted to recreate it with like a full intro. So I went ahead and did that with my logo. Um, if you would like to download this project file, head over to our Patreon account. So let's go ahead and just jump in After Effects here and create a new composition, Composition New. And I'm going to name this, um, doesn't matter what I'm going to name it, leave it Comp3 is fine. All of these settings look good, but there's one thing you want to change. You want to go under Advanced and increase this from like it's maybe 12 or 16 what it normally is up to like 32 or 48 um, this will make your motion blur way smoother and since things are moving really fast you're going to definitely need to do that so let's just go ahead and hit okay and i'm going to drop in my logo here and i'm going to scale it down by pressing s on the keyboard and just scale it down a bit and i'm going to add a fill to it real quick so effect generate fill and just make it white because i want it to be a white logo and now I'm going to add some zooming and positioning to this. Um, pro tip, if you do only zoom or only position, um, for some reason things just don't really operate linearly with um, speed graphs. So I like to do both position and scale, in, well position in the Z direction and scale, and I'll show you what I mean by that. And I think it just makes things a little bit smoother. So I'm just going to make this a 3D layer, and I'm gonna press P on the keyboard, set a keyframe, S on the keyboard, set a keyframe, U on the keyboard to see both my keyframes. So I'm going to set the position, I don't know, maybe negative 1900. And then I'm gonna increase the scale to maybe, um, I don't know, 130. Um, probably gonna be need, need to be more than that, maybe 530. So that looks good. And then I'm just gonna zoom in here. This composition's way too long. I'm actually gonna bring this to like uh, five seconds hit N on the keyboard, right click and go trim comp to work area. That will just make my composition the size of this work area. So I'm gonna to come to like 10 frames. And I'm gonna make the scale come down to let's say 100 and the Z position to zero. Uh, maybe actually the scale needs to drop even more than that, maybe to like 42. And I'm just gonna add some smoothing here using this plugin by Mount MoGraph. Um, I'll show you what the graph looks like here in the graph editor though. So this is what the position looks like, and this is what the scale looks like. Um, I'm actually gonna make this a little bit more aggressive by just grabbing this and dragging it over, as well as this one. So now you'll see what this looks like. So that's like really ultra fast. And for some reason it looks kind of choppy. So let me go back into my composition settings and make sure the frame rate is 30. So for some reason that looks a little choppy but that's okay. Oh, we need to add motion blur. I'm just gonna enable motion blur. So you can with that. Now I'm gonna add some effects, CC lens. Just add this on. Again, I'm gonna set a keyframe. So you'll, you'll see what this does actually. Um, it creates a lensing effect, but it obviously distorts it way too much. So for this first one, I'm going to make it, um, uh, let's see, like maybe 85. And I'm gonna set a keyframe for convergence, go to one second and make this zero. And then I'm gonna actually just do this two more times. And I'm gonna make this 95 size and 105 size and set the same keyframes for convergence. And I'm just gonna press U on the keyboard to see all my keyframes. And I'm just gonna add some generic smoothing to this using this tool. And all the curves will look like that. So you can just replicate that curve using the graph editor. So let's see what this looks like. I'm just gonna save it real quick. So that looks pretty good. Um, I think we can do a little bit of work here. Um, maybe with the scale. Um, let me just go ahead and look at my tutorial one that I used as a reference. 
So my scale dropped down to about 45. And the scale I'm using here is 42. So let me just increase the scale a bit. And so what I want is I want more stretching on these letters. And I'll show you what I mean um, in my reference. You see all that beautiful stretching that occurs? That's what you want. And the only way to achieve that is to just continuously adjusting um, the size here. Okay, so I basically just messed around with this for about 19,000 hours. And what I came to the conclusion is, is that there's so many things that go into this in terms of where the position and scale fall into place um, here with the, um, with the motion, as well as how fast and how slow things are actually happening um, that play into um, what kind of effect you're gonna get that, it, it, you know, it's one of those things you just have to keep messing around with the size and, um, and you'll, you'll come up with something that, that looks pretty cool. Um, but you just have to be a little bit less, um, I don't want to say picky about what you, what you end up with. Um, but you just need to be aware that there's so many things that go into this and the way it actually looks in the end will be, um, a culmination of all of the settings that you adjust here. So I'm just going to go with this. It's not exactly what I wanted. I actually really like the one that I did, um, in this one. I think that, that this has a lot of really cool, you know, effects going on but um basically this these both of these compositions are essentially the exact same um there's just slight differences in position and smoothing that really does change the way this will look so i'm just going to go with this i think it looks good enough um, but just be aware that there's a lot that goes into that so um now that i actually have this done um i'm now going to just pre-compose this Control shift c and move all attributes to the new composition and hit ok um, now from here, I'm going to create a layer new null object and to increase the smoothing, I'm going to match this to the null object, hit S on the keyboard, scale this up, set a keyframe, go down to like maybe two seconds and now scale this down to 100 and then add some, again, some just smoothing to this. Your graph should look something similar to this. Now, the reason why I did that was because I want that kind of that see, see how it zooms in and it's pretty much done, but yet it still has a slight zoom out. I love that effect. I think that looks really cool. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm also going to duplicate this layer twice, change the blending modes to these two bottom to add. And I'm gonna add like a cool like chroma split on this. Um, it's pretty simple. You just go to um, split, I think CC split. Um, split is not what I want actually. What I'm gonna be looking for actually, instead of split is set channel. I'm gonna drop this on the two bottom ones. I'm gonna make the top one red only. So I'm gonna leave red on, and then I'm gonna turn off blue and green. And I'm going to do the same, except for I'm gonna turn off red and green and leave on blue. Now something cool here, um, you'll notice that where it overlaps, it becomes purple. But if I grab one layer and I shift it over, and then I grab the other layer and I shift it over in the opposite direction. You need a cool RGB split. So I like the way that looks. Um, but I don't want an RGB split the whole time. So I'm just gonna hit P on the keyboard, set keyframes, and then bring these back down to zero. And then add smoothing to these. And then make the same adjustment on both. I'm gonna make it a little bit different because I want the split to not be perfect. See, so you get a beautiful split there. So that looks cool. Um, one other thing I'm gonna do here, what's great about this is I can jump back into this and I could adjust all of these settings um, just the way you'd want. I could have also actually, stupidly, I could have all added this to an adjustment layer and then just placed my logo underneath it and moved the position and scale. And then that would have done basically the same thing. And then you could drop any logo in here. So that's also another option um, if you want to duplicate this in the future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I was gonna do something here. Um, now, last thing I'm gonna do is create a layer, new adjustment layer. And I don't really like the colors of that purple. 
So what I can just do here is go to, um, let's see, the name of it is color balance. HLS, drop this onto the adjustment layer, and then just adjust this until I like the purple, um, which that looks pretty cool to me. So that's pretty much it. You could add some other effects to this, but um, in general, I think that looks pretty cool. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe. Um, if you would like to download this project file, head over to our Patreon account where you can download this project file and make these adjustments to yours. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.